In this video, we're going to be using the details from our checkout session to display a custom order confirmation page to our customer after they've completed payment and have been redirected back to our site. Now, we'll be building on top of code that was generated using the Checkout Quick Start Integration Builder. If you don't already have this code, you can find links in this video's description to the Quick Start and also to other videos inside of the series. Let's quickly review our application. Inside of our code, we have a route called Create Checkout Session that's called whenever our customer clicks the Checkout button on our checkout.html page. This route generates the underlying Checkout Session object that redirects our customer to Stripe's hosted checkout. When the customer completes payment, they are redirected back to the success.html file, which at the moment is really just the static HTML page. What we're going to do is change that and use the information that we get from the checkout session object to display a more customized page. Back inside of our checkout controller, the first thing that we're going to want to do is update our success URL. What we're doing here is adding the session ID to that route. So whenever our user gets redirected to that page, it'll have the ID for the checkout session that we could use to get more information about what happened. Back in our code, I'm going to add a JavaScript file called success.js and a script tag referencing it from success.html. Inside the JavaScript file, we'll use the session ID we received as a URL parameter and pass it back to the backend via the order info route. Inside of our controller, we can see the order info route will take a session ID parameter and use it with the session service class to make an API call to retrieve the session object. Now, the session object does not contain the customer data by default. So using the session get options class, we'll set the expand property. So our requests will include the customer information. This is a very useful technique as it saves us from having to make multiple API calls. Now let's test this out on the server. What I'm going to do is test this out right inside of the browser. So I'm just going to go ahead and update this route, call it order info slash and as you can see here, our results are returned, so we know that order info route is working. Let's go back to our success.html file and add some markup to display the information. I'm going to give my section element a class of order info, and I'll add some list elements also. For this example, I'm going to display the name and email address of the customer, the order total, and also the payment status. Next, we'll need to style this up a little bit. So instead of my style.css file, I'm going to add some class-specific styles. I'll set the height and the list style for the unordered list to be none. I'll remove the flex style from the paragraph so it spans the whole width of the section. And lastly, I'll center the header at the top. Now let's go back to our success.jss file. We'll update the JavaScript to insert the customer and order information into the HTML that we just wrote. To get started, I created a helper function, setText, that will update the content of the given element. I'll use this to display the name and email address from the customer object in the session. If I don't have the customer object, I can also pull the email from the session itself. Next, I'll display the payment status attribute from the session object. To display the readable order total, I'll start by creating a currency formatter set to the session currency. Payment amounts are expressed using the smallest unit for the currency. Our price is in dollars, so the amount total will be returned to us in cents. Because of that, we'll need to divide by 100. Now, if we head back to our success page and we refresh, we'll see that it's displaying order-specific information instead of the old static page. Let's quickly review what we've done so far. We appended the checkout session ID template to the success URL attribute we passed in when we created our checkout session. This gave us access to the session ID when our customer was redirected after completing checkout. We took the ID, sent it back to our server, I made an API call to get the checkout session and also the associated customer. We use this information in these objects to display a customized page. If we go through our checkout floor one more time, we can see that our cancel page is also static. It might be a good idea if we allow our customers to return to their checkout session from this page. We can do this by adding the checkout session template variable to our cancel URL, just like we did for our success URL. Now, if we head over to the cancel.html, I'm going to add a form button that will allow us to return a checkout. By default, we'll set the action of the form to create a new checkout session in the event that someone lands on this page and there's no session ID in the URL. We'll also add a little bit of JavaScript to the page to grab the session ID from the URL and change the form action to a new route, which takes the ID as a parameter. If we head back over to our controller, 
we're going to add a new route called return to checkout session. And it's going to take the session ID as a parameter. It'll retrieve the associated session object, and then it'll redirect the customer to checkout using the session URL. Let's go through the checkout flow one more time. I'm going to return to our session page. I'm going to hit checkout. If I cancel it, now you see we have this button that says return to checkout. If I click it, now I should be able to fill out the form. And on completing this form, we should get redirected back to our success page. Thanks so much for watching, and I do hope that you found this video useful. If you want to learn more about checkout, make sure you check out the resources inside of this video's description.